Hey guys, welcome to Team Hornet. The dream came true. Finally, guys, the dream came true. We're in the F-18 Hornet. 104th Maverick, checking in with another video. I'm going to quickly demo the air to air refueling for you guys on the Hornet. The great news is, is that it's working perfectly well and it's fairly straightforward to um, accomplish. I'll run you guys through the TACAN system quickly on the aircraft so you can find the tanker for yourselves in your own missions. Most of you guys should already be aware how to do this if you've already checked out Wagsy's video on how to operate the TACAN radios. If you haven't already done that, make sure you head over to Wagsy's channel and check that out. We'll quickly run through it here just now though so that you can uh, see what we're talking about and then we'll get ourselves over to the tanker and uh, we'll, we'll do one narrated connection with a KC-130 followed by a few clips of connecting the aircraft to the basket under different conditions. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do, just to make it a bit easier to see the instruments, um, I like to do this anyway, I think it just looks sexier. We're going to turn the panel lights on just to get a little bit of, um, a little bit of clarity on the instruments here. So. Everything's lit up nice, nice and pretty. We're going to, the first thing we're going to do is select TACAN from the left DDI. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And then we're going to come uh, to the middle to the UFC and select TACAN on the center. Power up the system and put in the aircraft's TACAN frequency that we want. So we're going to clear, type in 13, which is the TACAN frequency, select Yankee and press enter. That's the frequency that we're operating on. We're on transmit and receive, we're also going to select air to air mode so that we get the, t the TACAN information from the tanker uh, displayed on the left DDI. As you can see we're 285 for 55 miles, it's given us a little indication there as well on the HSI for where we're going. And you can also see TEX there, T-E-X, that stands for Texaco, you can actually give them different call signs now which is very handy. We're going to go and turn the radio volume down for the TACAN instrument itself so that we don't hear the Morse code and make ourselves... Um, yeah, we're going to get ourselves in the area, guys. We're going to head over there now and then uh, check in with this guy and grab some gas. All right, gentlemen, we're checked in with the tanker. We're uh, one mile trail at the moment. You can see on the right hand side that HUD there 1.0 tex for Texaco. Nice little uh, bit of range information displayed on the HUD there, which is very handy. As we get closer, we're thinking about completing our before plug in checklist, which is actually very straightforward. We'll run through that just now as we're, uh, we're creeping in here. First thing we want to do is make sure our radar is in the standby, silent or MCOM position. We don't want to be frying these guys. Master arm switch, obviously we want to make sure that's in the safe position. Our internal wing fuel switch as desired. External tanks as desired. And an additional note here, if the engine feed tank fuel level is critical, the external wing and centre transfer should be in the stop or override position to ensure the fastest transfer of fuel to the engine feed tanks. The air refuel probe switch, we're going to get that out in the extend position in just a second. And uh, finally, visors down is recommended. Obviously, that's not, not really something that's affecting us. The actual um, procedure itself is, is very straightforward. The probe comes out and it's right in front of the HUD, so you can see that in your peripheral vision at all times, which makes the job um, a little bit easier than it is in the Harrier because you're not having to... Um, mentally map where the actual probe is. You can you can see it in front of you all the time, which makes it nice and simple. Alright, so we'll get in behind this guy in a pre-contact position. We'll get the probe out, right click to put it to the um, forward extend position. We don't want to left click because that's the that's the emergency extend. We're not we're not in an emergency here, guys. So right click to extend it in the forward position. You can see there the probe's just sitting off the right hand side of the HUD there, well within our peripheral vision here, nice and easy. So very similar to the Harrier guys, sounding like a broken record in these videos. It's all about trim here, okay? I cannot emphasize this enough how important it is to be trimming all the time at this at this point, okay? Uh, m most of what's going on here right now is trim. All right, now I'm going to show you guys some little little tips that I've picked up over um, practicing this over a few times. Some visual cues that you can um, that you can take to the bank, guys, and use with um, your aircraft once you start uh, training it. But for now, we'll just keep talking it in. Nice and steady. Lots of trim here. Lots of trim. Looking at the tanker, not looking at the basket, guys. Looking at the tanker, not looking at the basket. Creeping, creeping, creeping. Not perfect, not pretty, but we're in. So the fuel transfer started. Once we're, once we're actually connected to the basket, it's important to 
um, power up a little bit and creep in about three or five feet. Just nice and easy until you get that green light on the, the, the fueling pod there. So you don't want to connect and then just stay in that position. It's important that you come forward a little bit, like I said, between three and five feet is ideal. And the fuel transfer process will start after that. So what we'll do is we'll disconnect here and we'll come back in for another one. And what we're going to do on this one, guys, I'm going to talk to you about the visual cues that I'm using here, okay? Now, what I want you guys to concentrate on is the, the HUD. Alright, look at the, the vertical uh, indication lines, or, or pitch ladder. Alright, you see 5 degrees, you see 10 degrees on the, the pitch ladder there, okay? I'm going to zoom in and check it out for you now. So, right there. Alright, what we're looking to do is see that 10 degree on the pitch ladder, on the the, 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 the horizontal line on the right hand side, we're looking to keep that lined up with the hose, alright, at the top of the actual fueling pod. You'll see what I mean in a second here, we'll drop back in here and I'll, um, I'll show you this again, alright. So what we're looking for, we're looking through the basket guys, alright, we're not looking at the basket, we're looking through the basket and I'm lining up the pitch ladder with the actual hose coming off the, the tanker here. Now specifically what I'm looking to line up is just below the actual refueling pod. You see there, you see how it's, it's just lining up now? So I'm getting myself in the correct kind of vertical and horizontal position. And what I'm, that's basically where my where my main focus is. I'm checking different things as well. I'll have a quick look at the, the, the KC-130 engines specifically the far left engine, I'll, I'll quickly check that, then I'll quickly look down at my aircraft and then back, but the, most of the time guys I'm looking through this basket at that pitch ladder, you see how where I'm keeping it, you see that position, just walking it all the way in, contact, walking it all the way in guys, keeping the pitch ladder on the hose, if just a tiny little bit on the, on the, the left hand side of the hose now, that's a very, very handy visual cue for you guys to reference going forward. Now, when the aircraft, the tanker, when it's turning, okay, you still use the same visual cue, but you switch it to the other side, guys. I'll show you some demos in a little minute. Um, so instead of using the right-hand side of that pitch ladder, use the left-hand side of the pitch ladder. So you, so instead of lining up the right-hand side where it says 10, um, you're lining that up on the left-hand side. Same principle, okay? We want the end of the pitch ladder to just be touching the, the hose. And we'll see what I mean as we, we take some more fuel um, further on in this video. So that's the, that's the main visual cue that I've been using, guys. It's very helpful. Obviously, you're going to develop your own kind of technique to do this, but um, you don't need to use that visual cue either. You can use different stuff. But the worst thing you can do is look at the basket, okay? That's the worst thing that you can do. You want to be looking through the basket and the basket's always in your peripheral vision. So you're lining up the probe with the basket using your peripheral vision and your visual cues that I've, um, that I've just, one visual cue that I've given you. You'll probably find some more visual cues as you go forward and do more training. But at this point right now, we're, we're, we're still thinking about trim. Lots of, lots of trim adjustments at this point, guys. Lots of throttle movement as well. Remember, there's no magic position with the throttle, guys. That doesn't exist. We're never ever going to be in a throttle position where we're staying for a couple of seconds. The throttle is always moving, guys. Back, forward, back, forward. We're always walking the throttle. But relaxing at this stage. Just, like, just taking it easy, guys. Just just out here, just, just working. Just in the office. So we're going places now. We're starting a left-hand turn. You see how that pitch ladder changes from the right to the left? You see that, guys? Pitch ladder. We've went from the right-hand side of the pitch ladder, now we're on the left-hand side of it. So it's almost like a carbon kind of swap. Where the pitch ladder was on the right-hand side of the HUD, we've now moved over a little bit and we're now matching up the, the pitch ladder on the right, on the correction, the left-hand side. As you can see, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you're in that area, you're good, especially when you're on the hose. It's more, it's more important when you're coming in to connect, and I'll show you more of those, so... When you're watching the clips um, for the rest of the video, guys, when when I'm connecting to the tanker, when the tanker's in a left-hand turn, that's my main point of reference, guys, all right? Is I'm lining up the left-hand side of the pitch ladder with the hose just underneath the fuel pod. Remember to relax. Breathing and just telling myself that uh, 
telling myself that I'm the boss. And uh, yeah, we're, everything's calm, everything's fine. Transfer complete. So just checking to right, making sure there's no aircraft in the vicinity. Probe back into the uh, back into the aircraft. Six seconds up and six seconds out. So just checking around us, make sure we're not going to collide with anyone. Safety first, guys. Safety first. Coming up alongside in the reform area, and that's it. That's it, guys. It really is very straightforward. The um, the fuel transfer process is all autom all automated. Takes a bit of practice. We're going to see some nice shadow work here. Watch this. Takes a little bit of practice, but it's a very rewarding procedure, guys. Very rewarding. Welcome to the Hornet, gentlemen. It's been a long time coming, and we made it. We made it, guys. All right. I'll throw up some more clips. I hope this helped. I'll see you guys in the Hornet skies. Take care. Contact. 